Before jumping into something, let me uh, tell you what you are going to learn from this uh, video tutorial. What's the purpose of it? So first, let us understand what is React Native and why you have to learn it. React Native is a popular, a very popular cross-platform library that is based on React, but it's not necessarily the same. Uh, and it is a very cool thing and it allows you to build applications both on the Android devices and iOS devices like iPhone, iPad and uh, etc. So this is a very cool uh, and the reason that it is cool is that before, uh, not, uh, not far before, people were used to learn a native technologies. Like for example, if you want to build an application for Android device, you should have learned Android Studio. So Java and all of it, all the new libraries, all the new headaches. So that's the cool thing about React Native. First, it is very powerful. It, it, as the name suggests, React Native, it brings you the experience of native development like uh, you do on a Swift and Android Studio uh, and it makes a cool applications for both of the devices. So you save time, you save resources, you save money and everyone is happy. So why, why should you learn it? Why should you learn React Native? So we understood that it is very fast, very powerful, and it is very demanded on the market because the most important thing is to get a valid, a good product that will satisfy the customers, satisfy the stakeholders, and it will be fast and very efficient in a, in a manner of economy. So the learning outcome from this course is going to be how to uh, set up the React Native inside your computer, how to build things with it, and overall, you will, we will uh, walk you through the JavaScript, walk you through the most important React Native components, uh, which will give you a good base, a good foundation. We are not going to go deep inside to explain each variable because we are going to assume that the the one who looks at this video is have already some experience with JavaScript and React Native, but we are going to give you the explanation of the how the project is already built, uh, how the components work and interact with each other, and we'll talk some of the difficult steps. So first of all, we are going to install and set up the environment. So in order to set up environment, you need Java, no, Java, for the backend, so there are some things that are based on the Java, so you just have to install, you don't need to worry about it, we are not going to do anything with it. But then you are going to install the Node.js, which is the most important thing, that the React Native is based on it. Then we are going to get an editor where we are going to write our code. Uh, in, thing, in editors, I am not limiting anyone. So if you if you are free to use subtitle or uh, sublim or uh, atom or visual code, it doesn't matter. Uh, really, we don't care about it too much. Uh, but I will highly suggest that you use Microsoft Visual Code or Atom because they are designed for React Native and it will be more easier for you to use it and work with it. Then we are going to install Android Studio. Why? Because uh, we have to demonstrate somehow the project and as soon as we type inside the editor we want to see how the changes are directly made that's why we are going to bring the emulator on the right side and the code on the left side and we are going to uh, write the code and see the changes change the code and see what what led it to us uh, eventually you do not need to have an uh, android simulator on your computer if you have a USB cable and you have the Android device physically available for you you can just plug it uh, inside the computer and run from the terminal a command which which I will tell you uh, later and after that you are going to uh, able to test it and see the application directly on your device yeah, and there will be some installations like Android Studio installation, Visual Code installation, Node.js installation, and I would like you to follow me through these installations. Why? Because uh, I will not. I, first of all, I will not recommend you to do, do uh, the Node.js and some other installations by your own by following some guide on the internet, because. 
uh, this thing is crazy actually. Some uh, versions are not working with each other. So for example, uh, we are going to install Node.js 12.10.0 uh, version. And if you install one, uh, let's say the latest version, if my memory is not failing me, it's the um, 14, version 14, if you install it, there will give you a bunch of errors. Maybe there is a solution for that errors. I'm not sure. You can check on the Google if you are so sure that you want to use the latest version. But uh, if you uh, if you follow me up, you can ask me questions after the video. Uh, you can uh, and I'm going to fix the most bugs that can occur during this installation. Okay. So as I said, the first thing with, that we need is uh, to set up the environment. Uh, so the first, our first steps will be to set up the environment, and after setting the up environment, we'll go already the coding part, where we will just install the editor that we are interested in. In my case, I will use the Visual Code. Uh, you can, uh, I will not show you the installation of Visual Code or Android Studio because this is not necessarily what we need to cover and there is no difference between the version. The only thing I, I will show you is how to connect the React Native and the virtual emulator together. So let's go for the, let's go before, yeah, also one thing I would like to mention is how uh, in order to motivate you kind of, I would like to show you how will our project look like? This is not going to be exactly the same as uh, our project, but it is going to be similar to it. And the most important thing, if you follow up the, uh, the project code, if you look at the code and you understand it, the thing you see right in front of you in the picture is going to be uh, just a, a very easy thing for you to do. It is not going to be exactly the same, but we are going to have a pictures next to each other. We are going to have labels on it. We are going to have menu. We are going to have the discuss how you can navigate from one screen to another screen. You will be able to scroll horizontally and vertically. So overall, you will gain go, going to get the foundation in React Native. From after all, if you are interested, you can build on it, get a knowledge and basically build your building and achieve hopefully any other good project. So yeah, so as I said, the first step is the uh, installation and setting up. Uh, then in the Google, we are going to type uh, Node.js. We'll go to the first website. As you can see, uh, there is a download for the Windows, uh, Windows, uh, the 64-bit, 64-bit uh, architecture. It already directly detected for me. So in case uh, if it doesn't uh, detect, you can type here like Mac or Linux, and it will br bring you the correct installation. As you can see, recommended for most users. The current one is 14, and the recommended is 12 because. The 14 is kind of a beta version, alpha version. People are still testing it, people getting problems with it. But even the, the one that is recommended is not actually working pretty well. So I will go for the other downloads and I'll try to find here uh, the previous releases. So previous releases. So we are interested in the 12 let me remind myself we are interested in 12.10 right so we'll go for the version branch and le let us go here again oops it's not here okay yeah i'm sorry so you have to scroll down basically you have to scroll down and you can see the old versions are available here we are interested in 12.10 and it have to be zero right yeah so we'll go for the 12.0 this one so we'll click download and then it will bring us to kind of an index of all downloads available as we are going to install on uh, the uh, Windows uh, Windows 10 operation system 64 bit architecture. We are going to download the x64.msi. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll wait for a little bit. So, so okay, the download got completed. Okay, so we'll click next. Uh, I accept the terms. Next, you will choose the location you want. Next, next, uh, install the necessary tools. 
Oh, we actually don't need it. Next. So finish. Okay, so for now we have already installed the Node.js, the main component that we, are in, we need in order to create React Native projects. Uh, the second most important thing is to create the virtual uh, emulator, the virtual device that we are going to run the project on it. So in order to do that, we have to install Android Studio. It's very easy to do. We just have to go Google, type there Android uh, Studio and download the latest version from their website. I'm not going to go through the installation of Android Studio because it's very basic. You have to just follow the uh, default uh, next, next, next process <laughs> So of installation. So I'm going to close it now. The thing that I, I think it's important that you have to consider is how to get the device uh, itself created. So in order to, in, on virtual, uh, on Android Studio, in order to create a virtual device, you are going to go to Android Studio. Uh, you will see on the right top corner, there is a phone with the Android icon. You're going to click on it. Then as you, uh, uh, you will get a window popped up that uh, in your case, there will be no Pixel 2 API 29. Uh, because it's a virtual device that I already created before. Uh, but in order to create a new virtual device, you're going to click here, create virtual device, then select uh, the virtual device you're interested in. You can see the resolution, the density, whether it supports Play Store or no. So in my case, I selected the Pixel 2 because it's one of the latest versions. Then you click next. Uh, I would highly suggest to select the highest Android version that is possible. In my case, it's Android uh, 10 uh, because it is supported with uh, the most recent uh, React Native components. So because if you install the different version, maybe there will be some issues that are not fixed before. So yeah, after after installing the Pixel 2 API 29, you can you can click to start to see whether it works. Yep, for me it works, uh, and that's it for the installation of the Android Studio and the creating a virtual device. Now on, we will move forward, create a project. Uh, I'll I'll show you how you can create a project from terminal for uh, Node.js, and then we will go to the project. First, I will show you the demo, how the project looks like, then we'll dive how the components were used. Okay, so I want to congratulate you that you almost reached to the step that we are going already to show you the, how the project looks like itself. And before uh, running the project from the terminal with uh, Android Studio, there is some more pre-configurations that we have to do. It may seem a little bit tricky for someone who is not used to do things, uh, is not used to configure Android Studio before or working with the operation system much. So if someone is, has no programming experience, but it's a very easy process if you are using a physical device. You can just download the Expo application on it, as I said before. Uh, then by downloading the Expo application, you whether either plug uh, the, your Android device with the USB or you just uh, you uh, take uh, take out the camera from inside the application, bring it uh, near to the barcode in the website that we are going to show now, and you will get the access. But as, as I'm going to show you on the Android Studio, let me show the configuration. Then I will show you how you can do it in an easier way. So first of all, let me open the requirements that we have here. First, uh, we are going to uh, install Android SDK. In order to do the Android SDK installation and platform and installation of the platform tools, we need to go to the Android Studio. So let me run it. Then, after it opens up, uh, you can see from now I have a project running there, but you don't need to care about that. It doesn't matter if you have the project or there, it can be just a blank. So you go File, Settings, and then from Inside Settings, you are going to go Appearance, System Settings, Android SDK. From there, you are going to click SDK Tools, and then for for uh, for someone who just downloaded Android Studio, he or she will not have the following uh, check boxes checked. So you are going to check 
the Android SDK build tools checkbox, Android SDK command line tools, the latest version, uh, Android emulator, Android SDK platform tools, and of course the Intel uh, uh, Intel emulator accelerator. Uh, we need this in order to run the second device inside our, our operation system because it's a kind of other operation system is going to run inside our main operation system. So that's why we need the emulator accelerator. So we are going to click OK. It's going to take some time to install. It's around one gigabyte if my memory is not failing me. So yeah, after the installation, you will get a folder inside your, if you go to your app data, if you go to this folder, you can, uh, this folder, uh, this folder is def uh, the default folder in all operation systems. To access it, you are going just to search for, putting the percentage da sign app data, and data, and the percentage sign closing. You will enter here, then you will go back from the roaming folder, local, the new as local, then you will go. Uh, you will see there is a folder called Android. You will see inside this folder there is an another folder called SD key. If you see this folder and you enter inside, and again you see build tools, platforms, platform tools, then you it means that you have correctly installed. Uh, you have correctly installed Android Studio and the platforms that we have just required from you. Also, it states that you have installed a virtual device in your Android Studio. So after after seeing that the folder exists, you're going to copy the path and you're going to add this path to your uh, system. So you can access this path from anywhere in the command line. So in order to do that, you can either run these three commands. You can run either these com three commands by changing here uh, the path you have. So you basically, uh, usually, uh, like 99%, it's uh, the same place. It's APB data, local Android SDK platform tools. The only thing you have to change is this part. So see what kind of you, what kind of uh, hard drive, uh, what, on which letter of hard drive you're running it, which user you are. Just uh, change it and add this to the path. You can you can either run this command one by one, like by just going to CMD, uh, copying this one and passing there, or if you are not <clears throat> Well enough with the command line, you can go to the computer, uh, my computer, right click on it, then properties, and here you're going to go to advanced settings, which is on the left side, then it's advanced settings, you're going to do uh, again advanced properties, and here you can see that there is a path. You're going to double click on the path, then click create, here you will have a create, then after going to create, you're going to enter the uh, entered these lines that are already uh, entered for me. So I have entered it before. So you're just going to create, uh, click create, then you're going to pass it just here, and that's it, click enter. And then the last step that you have to do is create a variable Android home, just same as here, so you can look at the video, and same as here, and enter this path. So not platform to, not, not platform tools, no, uh, no, not tools, not platform tools, not platforms, just Android SDK with the variable name of Android Home. To do that, you're just going to click uh, here, create the name of the variable, it is Android Home, and the destination of it, which you see users from for my case, triple A, app data, uh, app data, local Android SDK. After doing that, we're going to click OK, OK, and that's it. We are going to close everything up. The next thing we already have to do is create our project. So let's say I am someone who already have set up everything, and I want to create. Uh, I want to create already the project from scratch. So what do I do? In order to create the project, we are going to go to our command line. So I'm going to type cmd here, enter the command line, then. Uh, on the desktop, I'm going to create a new folder called React Native. As you can see, it's already created for me. Uh, then I'm going to access to that folder via the command line. To do that, we are going to do CD desktop. Then inside from the desktop, we are going to do CD React Native. You can put any folder name, of course, you want. Then, in order to create a project from scratch in Expo, 
you need to run run the following command. The follow, the, uh, the command name is called npx expo CLA init and the name of the project, uh, name of the application or etc. Yeah. So this one, uh, the npx is going to be available for you as as you remember from the uh from uh, from the little bit uh, earlier that we have discussed you can run a, a node.js from your command line and if it, at, at the commands response back it means the npx is installed for you so in order to do that uh, in order to create the application we are going to write npx expo sci and the name of the project let's call the project name test one So then it will ask us for a template. So what's the difference between difference between creating a project with the Expo and creating a project from scratch, uh, the default one that React Native provides you? The Expo gives you a good template that you can build your project up on it. So the the files, the external files, the app dot. Uh, uh, app.js is already created for you. You don't need to manually configure the size and he and everything. So it's basically just a template that you can build your project up. Uh, for a beginner, it may sound like, okay, what's the difference? We would like to dig more, but you will understand it only as soon as you enter inside the thing. So we are going to create the blank. So it's going to be a minimal app as clean as empty canvas. So it's going to be a clean template that will allow us, <coughs> sorry, uh, allow us to build our project on it. So I'm going to click enter. It's going to take a little bit of time. Yeah, so what we are going to do now, now <coughs> after the installation of the JavaScript dependencies and the template is created over, we are going to run, we are going to run it uh, there is actually two, uh, three ways of running it in the Expo CLI. Either you can run it as in a browser because you know that React Native is based on React. They have similarities, so it gives you the chance of running it on a web browser. Or you can run it later, or you can run it on a physical device. So now, uh, as you can see, your uh, our project is ready, as it states here. If you get this come uh, get this uh, uh, pro uh, get this alert back, then means your project is ready. So in order to do that, we are going to go to the folder that was just created by Expo. Uh, the folder name is going to be the name that you just gave to the project. Well, the pro project name was test one, so I'm going to do cd test one. Okay, so I'm inside. So in order to run this project, we have to do expo start. As you can see, it just created, it, it just opened a port 19002 on our local host. And we have a, a beautiful uh, graph web API, uh, web application, sorry. And in web, in this, um, in, in our screen, you can see that on the left side, uh, we have few rows that says run on Android device simulator, run on iOS simulator, run in web browser, publish, republish project, and a barcode there. So what is used this barcode for? What the barcode is there for? If you have installed the Expo application, inside the Expo application, you can see a script, uh, you can see their scan QR. QR code, and as soon as you bring the camera with that uh, feature near to the, your screen, it will uh, <laughs> kind of very in a very nice way scan it and display your application uh, on your uh, physical device without any connections, without anything. Just you have to be on the same internet. Sounds cool, right? But we are not going to do that. But as I'm going to demonstrate it, and you have to see it here, I will do it in an Android simulator. So I am going to click on the Run Android Device Simulator, but actually I will show it on the you on the project that is already created. Now I'm going just to show you how it works. So I'm going to click Run in a web browser because it's attempting to open the project in a web browser.
starting web pipe on port. And that's it. As you can see uh, on the on the title, you can see that this is a test one. And it says open up app.js to start working on your app. This is just a text. Uh, it's a, just a label that is the by default created in our app.js uh, JS file. So this is not a warning. This is nothing. This is just a text box. So if you get the screen, it means just that's it. It clearly works. And we have to start already to build our project. Okay, so let's go to the, our visual code editor and see how our new created project looks like by scratch, in a scratch way, like the default way, how it looks like. So I'm going to click on the visual code uh, editor here. Then I'm going to click file, open folder. Uh, as you can see, I'm on the desktop and the React Native folder, and there is a folder called test1. So I will click on it. Yeah. And that's it, it's there. So let me maximize it for you. As you can see, we have a few files there. Uh, and the most important files that uh, I would like to talk about is the node, node modules. Node modules stand for the modules or the libraries that you have installed on it. So this is the libraries that you have to take care of. So there's some components that when you, when you want to use inside your application, you have to install it, which we'll talk a little bit later. So this is the libraries you have installed on. Uh, you have, this is a web build that was just created for a web, web one, uh, the one that we have around in the browser. And the most important the one that we have to know about is the app.js. This is the this is the thing that we just have seen here. So if I bring the two two uh, two two of them uh, right next to each other, you can see that it's a just an a text a text text uh, text tag with an open up app.js to start working on your project. So you can see it's it's uh, we have the same thing here. So if I start to uh, change it to something else, it, it will get changed here also. As you, can, as you can see, it directly, uh, reactively, <laughs> in a way, it's changed the thing. So it's just a text box, nothing else. So let me talk a little bit about what's going on under this uh, simple project. So first, we are importing the libraries that we need in order to proceed. So this one is the kind of a common one that we have to uh, import. So we'll start to work in a React platform. Then we are importing style sheet. Style sheet is used to, to style the, the objects that you have on your screen. So as you can see, uh, we have, uh, yeah, uh, and there is a text which is used for a text tag and view is kind of, if you are from a web development background, it's, that, it's same, similar to a div. So a view is kind of a container that you can put your objects together. So in React Native, in order, if you want, uh, if you want to put uh, some uh, some uh, multiple objects together. In order to do that, you have to have a container. So view stands for a good container, so you can put multiple text boxes together. And we put a style of this view object to a style container. Sorry. Uh, and the background. Uh, this is the background color, align items, justify content, and both. Uh, this for the uh, this, uh, justify content stands for the horizontal aligning and align items for the ver vertical aligning. So both of them are on the center. So that's why the open up .js, uh, is uh, this kind of. Uh, in other words, this one line of code is right in the middle of the screen. So. Uh, let me open the project that we are interested in, uh, the, the one that we have created and we want to show, show it with, with you, share it with you, and so you will have a better idea, a more clear idea how the projects look like in React Native and how powerful is it. So in order to do that, first thing we have to do is go to the Android Studio. As we open the Android Studio, we are going we are going to run the uh, Android Virtual Emulator uh, Manager, which is on the right corner of the Android Studio. So I'm going to click on it. Then I'm going to run the virtual device that we have installed before. So I'm going to click Start. 
so you will have your Android device on your right side. Let me make it a little bit smaller so it will not cover all the screen. <laughs> yeah. So, so do we are going to go to the command line as we did for the test one. Then we are going to change the folder, uh, change the folder to the project folder that we are interested in. In my case, the project for uh, project folder is called food. I called it food for just for four letters, so it will be more easier rather than a restaurant application. Uh, don't worry, you will be provided for the uh, for the code and the food folder. You just concentrate the things I'm doing here and try to learn from it. So I'm going to do the food folder. Then I'm going to run, as soon as you are the, in the folder of the project, you are going to write expo start. <coughs> Closer. Uh, in this in this time we are not going to run it in a browser we are going to run it in the emulator it's okay so as soon as you are in the browser you click run on android device emulator it's it's going to open uh, on android device so let's see what's happening here building the javascript bundle it may take some time depending on the performance and hardware of your computer so hello there Let me make it a little bit bigger yeah, so hello there, fan. Science is your first time. Okay, got it. Thank you. Let's close this by X. It's just a welcoming screen. Okay, so here is our app already running there. I think it would be more greater if it would be more bigger. Yeah. You can see our app has a search bar icon there with the title also there. And uh, it has a it has a cost effective section. It has, has a bit pricier section. It has also uh, uh, another section with the highest value, which is not here because this kind of restaurants don't have the high, that that section. So it's not it's not going to just show us. So you can see you can uh, you can by uh, uh, in a real physical device you will be able to scroll it via finger. But here I'm going to show you with the mouse. So you can see you can scroll, you can scroll uh, here also, right and left. And let's say you are interested in one of the restaurants, for example, and you can see as soon as you click on it, it's going to give you the description of the uh, specific restaurant, and you will be able to scroll there to see more images from that restaurant. So here's the project. Also, you can search for, let's say you are interested in pizza so let's look for pizzas so it's going to search through the api find the pizzas there and again let's click on one of the pizzas and again we get another another set of pictures with the description so this is the product overall that we are and let's jump into the code okay so let's talk about the code in order to run, uh, in order to see the code, we have to go to the our visual code editor, then go file, open folder, then click on the folder that it will be provided in a GitHub or in the description. Uh, so you're gonna uh, double click on it and click yes, select the folder. So you are inside the Visual Studio. So what I'm going to do in order in 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 order to tell you which component gives what, which idea. I'll bring the two windows next to each other so you will see clearly. So uh, I'll open the picture also. Just one second. Yeah. So OK. So this is the this is the project and this is the uh, this is the project and this is the code of the project that we are interested in. So let's start from the beginning. We have a lot of files here, and for first it can be confusing. For our experienced developer, it may sound easy. So for what we are going to do first, we are going to talk about what we have in app JSON app .js file. Then we are going to have a look what components, screens, hooks, and APIs we have here. So, uh, what what we have in app.js? As I said, the app.js is the main file that we are interested in. This is the main file where everything goes in. Here, we are going to create a navigator constant. Navigator constant. 
it is like uh, when you declare something like this in React Native, it is a function then. This is the way that you declare a function inside React Native, and this is the name of the function. What create stack navigator function is going to do, it is going to create a navigator that will allow the user to navigate from one screen to another screen. We are going to have two screens here. The first screen is going to be the main screen, which is the cost where we have cost effective, big sender, bit price here, and the menu out there. The second screen, which is going to be result show screen, is as soon as you click on one of the restaurants that you are interested in and you move to the uh, to the appropriate menu where you will see the description and more images about the file. So, so we create here two variables. Uh, screen one and screen two uh, with the name of research and result show then we are going to put the initial road name as attribute which is going to see say which screen is going to pop up first so this one as we are going to pop up the first search screen the this screen then we will put the initial road name to search if we change this and put result show then it is going to show uh, the first screen uh, it will give an error actually because it doesn't know which screen to show actually then we have a title, uh, as you can see here, is written search screen, and we have a search screen here, and export default create app content. This is just by default that we have to do. But before doing this, we have to import some stuff that will allow us to uh, navigate from screen to screen. In order to uh, import this, we have to write the following command lines, and from the command line, we have to go to the command line, navigate to the project flow folder, After navigating there, we have to go and install the dependencies. In order to install React Navigation, we have to write npx install React Navigation and npx install React Navigation stack. Don't worry, these commands will be given to you uh, in order to install both of them. So after installation, you will be uh, you will be able to. Uh, sorry, I misclicked. Yeah, so you will be able to uh, use the following imports. So okay, we have we have covered the app.json. So have, let's look what else we have here. So as I said, we have created two screens out here. So let's talk about each screen. So let's talk about the main screen we have there. I created a folder. When you see things there, screens, hooks, and components, API, they are actually folders. So I make I I divide it into four folders so it will be more easier for the develop other developers to understand. So I put a screen where is the, which is going to be uh, the main screens out there. So let's go from the uh, main screen, search screen. What we have here. So first, uh, let's start from the design, then we'll go inside the um, inside details. So we have a search bar. We have a search bar component out there, which is, as you can see, the search uh, search bar where we can type and it is an icon. So, so as you can see, it's a search bar component. And we have a flex01, which is going to take the whole entire container here, all upper part. We have used the flex style, so it will make the all upper part. Then inside the search bar, we have other three components, result list, result list, result list. So each result list is uh, one container one whole container so result this first result list is the cost effective the second result list is bid price here the third result list is big sender so we have divided this three this whole menu into three sections cost effective bid price here big sender so that's why we have three result lists and we have a one search bar that is top of all of them then we have a title, as you can see, the, uh, we put a title attribute, cost effective, bid price here, big spender. Then we have a navigation here. This is used for passing the variable from there. We are going to pass this variable so our uh, application will understand that this is a, has a $1 sign, hence it's a cost effective. If it's a double dollar sign, it's bid price here. If it's a triple dollar sign, then it's a big spender. Okay, so how do we get this 
Uh, oh yeah, also and one thing I would like to mention is that we have a scroll view here. What does scroll view mean? Scroll view, as you saw, we were able to scroll down and up. Uh, so if, if in case uh, the we want to see what's in the big sender, as you can see, the screen is not able to cover the big sender, but we will be able to scroll it down and see. Hence, to do that, we have to take this, all resolve this, and put under scroll screen section. You can actually make a tab so that it will be under the scroll screen, so it will be more clear for you. Yes, and we have a search bar also there, as I said. So that's it for, for the screen. Uh, other things I would like to cover is this one. This is a kind of a set function that it says it will change as soon as you type something here, uh, it will change the term and set, uh, to, uh, with the function of search term, set term. As you can see, the set term is used inside the search bar. As soon as you type something in the bar, this variable, this variable will be get changed. And use state is used for a default value. So the default value of the search bar is empty. So if I type something here, it will get changed here. So hence, it's an empty and it's use set term function to change the term here. So let's go, so let's discuss about this result list and search bar components. How do we get them? We are going to create a components, a result list, and search bar, so it will be more clearer, more effective, more, let's say, beautifully designed, so, it will not, so everything will not be in one page. We could, of course, define and declare everything in one a search screen, but we have I have uh, divided it into components uh, folder hooks folder, so it will be more easier for to understand. So let's go for the search bar. As you can see in the search bar, let me open it. We have a bunch of styles uh, like background color, so it will be a little bit gray. The hay, the border radius, the border radius actually makes the uh, round box um, the box around the search bar round. Then we have margin horizontal, so it will bring it right in the middle. A flex direction in a row, so it will be in the row position. Uh, the input style, what, what kind of input it is going to take. And the icon style, because we are going to have icon there. So it, I think this is very easy, uh, so we'll not go much, much on it. The feeder is the icon. So and it's inside the view container. As you can see, the icon is here. So we want to put the text box, the text input place, near the uh, with the icon. So we are going to put both of them in a views view container, and there is going to be the text input. Uh, the text input is the input where we are going to put everything over here. As you can see from the uh, search screen, we are calling it out here, and we are changing the text here, but in order to use it, we have to define some stuff. Uh, so for us, and there is a few attributes like auto capitalize that we don't want to it to be turned on. Auto correct, we are also putting in a full. <coughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, and the placeholder is going to be search. Uh, placeholder is going to be search uh, because uh, we want to show the user what is going to be. You can put it anything we want, and we are going to put it a style that is going to use the input style. And that's it for the search bar. So let's go to the, uh, so we have covered the search bar. Now let's talk about the result list. What is it and why, why, do, why are we even calling it? So let's go to result list. Okay, so in our result list, again, we have a few. Okay, so we, have, we are understanding, or as soon as we see a view, we, we understand that there is a container and inside the container, we have a text and what, what is the name of the text? It, it says a title, but where is the title? Title is inherited from the search screen class. And inside the search screen class, you can see the title equals to cost effective. The way you inherit from one class to other, so for example, the components inherits from the uh, search screen, right? So let's go result list. And you can see that we have import, uh, we have inherited from here. We have inheritance here. So as soon as you de uh, declare the result list, uh, the, this function, and you see there that there is a title results navigation here, as, as you can see here, it means we are inheriting it as, uh, from the class that calls this function. So in the 
In the search screen, we are getting cold, right? This results list is cold and it is given the title variable. Okay, so here what I say, I say, okay, I'm going to take the title variable, result variable and navigation variable, and I'm going to use it inside my class. So I, in I have inherited it. Uh, so as soon as I have inherited it, I'm going to put it as the title of my tag. So this one is going to be called three times because we have called the result list three times. So we have cost effective, big price here and big sender. So we are going to put the, uh, and we have a flat list. So what is flat list? Flat list is kind of an array in React Native. This is, a, when you see a flat list, it means there is an array. So how we are going to set a data inside the array? So the data of this array is going to be the results. The results we will talk a little bit later, which we are going to get from the Yelp API, yelp.js. The key instructor is how we are going to index it. We are going to index it with the results.id. Uh, results have ID, so we'll talk about it. And we are going to render it, rend uh, rendering. Uh, I hope so, uh, people know what the word rendering means. It's just like kind of ordering uh, how we are going, what we are going to set up there. We are going to set the items. The item is uh, each result, the, the small array inside the, uh, each index inside the result array. And we are going to have a touchable opacity. Touchable opacity is just the box that is invisible and it can be clickable. So it's touchable, but it's invisible. So as you can see, this one, uh, the picture here, the pasta fresca, if I'm spelling it right, you can see it's an image, uh, but in a project, as soon as you run it, you can click on it and you will get to the description. I hope you remember. So you can click on it and go to the description, but it is empty. There is no borders. It doesn't look like button, but it's touchable. And inside that we have a result detail. Result detail holds the description of the, uh, uh, holds the description of the, of the current object, current restaurant in our case, holds the, uh, all the details about it and we have a if, if we have it under the components folder and on press is a function inside react native that uh, it works like in a way if you if you have experience with c sharp uh, or android studio or any other graphical user interface if not uh, it, it's very similar what i wanted to say but if you are not familiar with it it's just the way that tells the user what is going to do the touchable opacity the button or text mode when it is clicked on it when it's pressed so what we said as soon as it press go to the result detail so what what we have inside the result detail result detail we have an image a set of images we have a text and text is the result name, the name of the restaurant. And we have the rating stars and the reviews, as you can see there, and some styles there. So that's it for, uh, for, for the components and screens. Let's talk about Yelp.js. So what we are going to do, we are going to get this restaurant, restaurant from a Yelp.js API. The Yelp.js API is very easy. You have to just import Axios from Axios, then put the base URL, as you can see here, and you have to get you you will get you have to type here the API key that you got from the Yelp uh, Yelp.com. It's a very easy. You just have to register that, get your API, put the name Bureau here, here, and just pass your API here, and that's it. You're ready to set it up. So you just need to pass it. There is nothing to think about it. You have to just copy and paste it and import it there. So thank you very much. Uh, this was, that's it for the uh, project. Uh, I hope many things were clear for you. If you have any doubts, any question, you can ask me. Uh, we have covered most of it, but of course for a beginner it can be a little bit confusing but don't worry every everyone starts from something so if you have any questions again you can ask and you can manipulate this project you're free to manipulate this project there is no copyright for it uh, you can manipulate the project add new stuffs or use it somewhere else thank you very much